John Zuzga with Zuma Concepts. Today I'm bringing you a uh, gun modification video. This modification is on a 450 Bushmaster. It's a 450 that I built for my son. It's completely custom. I do all my own rifle work. I've built a lot of AR-15s. I've done a lot of modifications. I've helped buddies out with problems they've had on them. Um, this particular issue is a cycling issue and I've had it since I built the gun. I built this one and my daughter's. I do custom coatings. I Cerakoted these guns, Duracoated, and um, I do the, the full setup. And the, these guns are built out of premium parts. It's a 20 inch barrel setup. And uh, I did billet lower. I mean, it, everything on this is, is choice. It's the right setup. I go with a 20 inch barrel because it's the most uh, accurate from my experience. I've built 16s, 18s, and 20s, and I've shot them all and sighted them in for buddies and nothing holds a tighter group than a 20 inch barrel. I started out my first 450 as an actual factory Bushmaster and fell in love with it. And ever since I've, I've built them to save some money on them. But um, in this particular instance, I've been running into an issue. So what I, what I assumed this issue was, was just a break-in cycle. And normally the break-in cycle, I can throw some oil on the bolt and, and work through it. And um, I ran into a problem with my sons where it did it again and whether it was an oil issue or not, it did it out in the field while we were deer hunting and, it, and that's a frustrating situation for me. And rather than try to break this thing in, which with a 450 at a dollar fifty a round, it gets really expensive to break a rifle like this in. You know, you're, you're talking hundreds of rounds and at a dollar fifty a round, that can get kind of expensive. So. What I decided to do with this is to take this apart and open up the gas port. Um, I've done all of the light work. I'm looking at this rifle to make sure that that is the last thing that I could possibly be. I've done, I've checked, you know, sometimes magazines can cause this issue. If you have the wrong uh, buffer in there, <clears throat> it can cause this issue. And all of those things are good. Everything's square, I've cross-referenced it with other rifles. And um, I'm confident that this is the issue. And as you read these blogs, you'll find out that the Bushmaster uses a um, carbine length gas system, which is much shorter, which gives it more compression back at the bolt. And these aftermarkets that use a rifle length gas system on their 20 inch uh, barrels has this issue. All of the bloggers, and, and the more you read about it, the more you'll find out. I mean, some people open these things up from a, uh, uh, 0.104 to some guys have opened up to a point one uh, two, which is the full opening of your gas tube at the back side. So that's a full flow system. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this thing apart and get the fore end off. I'm going to show you how I would do this without having a drill press, without having an end mill, and I'm showing you how I would do it safely to make sure I don't mar up the barrel how I don't get burrs on the inside, how I don't run my bit through and hit the bottom of the barrel and screw more things up. And uh, like I said, I, I'm not sure what size this port is. I know that I'm going bigger. So once I get in there, I'm gonna gauge that, figure out what I'm working with, and I'm gonna go up to the next size and I'll walk you through how I'll do that in this video. I wanna start by taking off your hand guard so that you can get to your gas block. Your gas block is gonna be here. Take off this forearm, your hand guard, get to your gas block and we're gonna take that off. We're not gonna take it all off the gun. We're just gonna slide it forward so that we can work on that gas port on the top of the barrel. And to do all that, before I take and separate the lower from the upper, I'm gonna take off this hand guard and then I'm gonna separate the lower from the upper and I'm gonna vise it into uh, this bog depth grip. I've, I've showed this in other videos. I really like to use this for working on my guns. It's real sturdy. It's got a nice rubber vise, rubber and plastic vise. It doesn't screw up your gun. But I'm going to get it put into here, and I'm going to show you how I would drill that out. Okay, now that I have the hand guard off, now you can see the gas system. Here's your, uh, your gas tube. This is your gas block. And all of these are going to be different. Yours might be a little bit different when you're going to work on this. So you just got to make sure you have the right tools to do it. This one's just going to have three Allen head set screws that I'm gonna have to loosen so I can slide this back. And it's gonna pull your gas tube out of the top of your upper. Now I'm gonna remove the lower so that I'm not dealing with that. 
that's just your two detent pins there. Loosen these bottom set screws. I'm just going to lightly wiggle that gas block so it comes forward like that and comes out of the gas block port in the top of your upper. And then, like I said, I'm not going to take that away off. I'm just going to take it to there and turn it because here, this is the hole we're going to drill out. Carefully place this down. Make sure not to screw up your upper or any other parts. Now, because I'm drilling on this, I'm gonna be pushing down. I'm gonna lower this down so it's closer to the height of the table and rest the barrel on it so that I'm not, if I push here, it's gonna naturally wanna tip. So I'm gonna get that into a position so that when it does tip, it's pushing against the table and I don't run into problems while I'm drilling. So once you get it to this point, you have it set up, you're ready to drill it. Um, this is what I would recommend if you're going to do this from home. Number one, you're always better off doing this in a vise to make sure everything's square and true. Um, this is a very small hole. Uh, you'll have guys that, that are machinists and stuff like that are going to probably comment on this and say I'm freaking crazy, but I know some of you got this problem and can't afford to have a machine to do it, don't have a machine, don't have a machine to do it and set it up yourself, this will work. What I'm going to show you works, I'm going to do it myself. And um, one of the things I've read is there's a lot of issues with um, 450s with the 20 inch barrel and the full rifle length gas system. Now if you have a stock Bushmaster, which I have a stock Bushmaster, but these are ones I built for my kids. The the stock Bushmaster uses a carbine length gas system because of this problem. Um, but every, anything you read about it, you'll see that uh, everybody said, you know, one size doesn't fit all. You have to kind of mess with your rifle to get this thing right. And if you're having the problem, which like I said, I've been having this problem since I got the gun or since I finished building it, I just figured it was kind of a wear in issue. And if I would oil it really heavy, everything would work good for a little while, but then if it gets dry, this issue keeps resurfacing. So I'm actually gonna open this port up. I'm gonna to check to see what it is. Um, it looks currently like it's a 764. Um, I'm gonna check it, and if it is, I'm just gonna to go to my next drill bit. And uh, again, I'm gonna go through this process just to show you how you could do it at home. Um, um, so the first thing I do is I, I take and I get a, for a 450 Bushmaster, I get a, a 7 16 wooden dowel. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed this into the barrel. And what that's gonna do is protect me from, while using a hand drill, it's gonna protect me from going too far in. Cause you don't wanna go through and nick the bottom and mar up your rifling cause it'll screw up the accuracy of your gun. Um, and you wanna make sure you're using brand new bits, very sharp cobalt bits to work with hardened steel because you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're leaving burrs inside of your barrel. Um, there's a process you can do if you do end up with a burr inside there, it's use a little um, steel wool on your wire brush and kind of wind it on there. It's something that old muzzleloader guys used to use to enhance their accuracy and you run it in where that spot is and you just kind of work that back and forth and it'll, it'll work that burr out of there. Um, I'll show you when I go to take this rod out what I look for as far as if there is a potential of a burr. Um, wherever the hole ends up, I'm gonna look for some marring as I'm pulling this out. And you'll notice the dull rod, in most cases, will twist as it's going in, and that's because it's engaging your rifling. You'll see it enter the gas port, and when you get to that point, that's where you're going to stop. And, and again, this dowel is just to catch you from going to the other side. So as soon as you see a little bit of wood come out on the bottom of that drill bit, you're gonna stop. So, like I said, this hole is a 764, which is a 0 .0, uh, a 0.105 or 104. And 
really your gas tube isn't much bigger than that. And the next bit that I have, bit size I have, is going to be an eighth inch, which is going to be a point uh, one two five, which is going to be actually a little bit bigger than my gas tube. Um, if you go online, you can get the exact size bits, but um, knowing that the gas tube at this point is going to restrict it, and I'm looking for maximum pressure through this thing, um, I'm not overly concerned with using this eighth inch bit. And Heaven forbid if something goes wrong and this doesn't fix my problem, you can also go to an adjustable gas block, which will allow you to adjust the, how much pressure is coming through there. So when you do this, you're going to want to go nice and slow, and you want to make sure that you don't tip your bit. You want to be as straight as possible. You're not going through much meat here. so. I mean, short of holding it at an angle like this, you, you shouldn't cause too much of a problem as long as you're holding this thing as straight as possible. Again, any machine guys that see me do this or watch this video are gonna be puking in their own mouth, but not everybody has the resources or capabilities to do this in a machine shop with all the machine tools or even in a drill press. This is just an alternate option. Probably not the best option, but it's an option for you guys out there that don't have much to work with. Again, you want to apply a very light pressure. All right there, as soon as I seen wood, I stopped. And all that did was open up your gas port very slightly. Now I'm gonna carefully pull this wooden dowel out and I don't feel any drag there, which is a good sign. See where the hole is? You can see where some shavings drug across there, but there's no real gouges or mars in this wood, which gives me some confidence that there's not an issue there. I'll probably still run uh, a uh, brass brush through there with some steel wool on it just to be sure, but that protects you from going all the way through and hitting the back of your barrel and screwing things up. Now you're going to want to carefully your gas tube back up to go into your upper, right there. And then you're going to slide this until it hits the shoulder. And what I like to do is I look right down here and I eyeball line both sides of the gas block to be parallel to both sides of the top of your upper. But what I do is I just look carefully down at that, make sure I have good lighting, and I make sure that I'm dead even in comparison on all these sides to make sure that that's perfectly aligned to make sure that that gas port that I can't see under there is captured by the opening in the gas block that feeds the tube. And then just carefully jump back and forth and tighten down all three of these bolts. Mine has a set of three. I start with the middle one and then I do the two outside ones and come back and double check everything. So then carefully reinstall your handguard. Same thing with this, you're gonna jump back and forth I have four screws here to tighten, so just keep going until they're all about the same, making sure you don't over tighten. You don't want to do that, it'll screw up your equipment. Expensive mistake. Put the first pin in and then swing it open. charging handle in, leave that out slightly,
All right, guys, so there it is. That's all back together. Um, I just want to reiterate with you guys, altering your gas system, regardless, should be something that you put a lot of thought into. Um, get some second opinions on if you're not confident. Again, I've, I've worked on a lot of ARs. I've built a lot of ARs. Um, my confidence level is very high with what I've done here. And uh, this, what I showed you today is a safe way for somebody to do it that, that has the uh, wherewithal and know-how to do things from a skilled trade perspective. Um, I'm sure there's some gunsmiths that would just cringe at what I did here, but I'm confident what I did will work and if you're very careful, it'll work for you. Um, hopefully you like what you got here for information. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Be safe out there guys and have a good one.